Thursday, 22nd September 2022, witnessed the high level patronage and participation of President Mahmoud Buhari. Leaders from the G7 and G20 countries, some leaders from the 184 members of the United Nations, alongside international development partners and the business community. As you are aware, Nigeria and the United States have been close allies for many decades. The United States is one of Nigeria's main trading partners and one of our most important diplomatic partners. The relationship is one that has been carefully cultivated over time and our administration is committed to doing all we can to strengthen it. We can work together to increase the volume of bilateral trade and use today's event as an opportunity to explore and even farm up how this can be achieved. In 2020, Nigeria exported over 1.69 billion United States dollars worth of goods of the United States. These exports were primarily made up of crude oil and other petroleum products. Nigeria's capability is not just limited to oil and gas industry, but a variety of other sectors that hold real potentials. We are the largest economy in Africa and have over 200 million strong consumer market that is home to range of attractive opportunities in sectors such as agriculture, healthcare, light manufacturing, infrastructure development, and technology. The beauty of this forum is that the ministers responsible for all of these sectors are present here today, as we are some of Nigeria's premier business leaders who are already excelling in these spaces. Since the inception of our administration in 2015, we have focused on economic diversification and successfully achieved this by putting the economy on a path of sustainable and inclusive growth through an open, rules-based, and market-oriented way of doing business. One of my major objectives for this forum is to garner support from the Business Council for International Understanding for two of Nigeria's most high-impact developmental ambitions. A, driving strategic and financial investment into Nigeria's real sector transformation and be rightly positioning Nigeria as a major international supply chain partner to leading global economies like the United States. It is currently a challenging time for global supply claims. United States shippers have been under strain caused by reduced inputs from China and the growing backlog of European imports caused by the Russia-Ukraine crisis. The world has not fully recovered from economic challenges caused by the coronavirus pandemic. The pandemic has taught everyone the importance of having viable alternatives when additional supply chains are falter or fail. The current global challenges are expected to continue into 2023 and beyond, but Nigeria is ready to fill a greater amount of global demand. We are leveraging on our skilled labor force, strategic location, as well as production and manufacturing potential to move forward as a key trading partner to the United States. I have always held the strong conviction that there is no crisis 
developed an accompanying opportunity and a solution. Increased collaboration with Nigeria and the other developing markets is needed to mitigate against both current and potential future supply chain challenges. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the situation in the world today presents an opportunity for real sector investments in Nigeria. Since signing the African Continental Free Treaty Agreement, Nigeria has strengthened its position as a gateway to an integrated continental market consisting of 1.3 billion consumers with an aggregate GDP of 3.4 trillion United States dollars. We are focused strongly on developing Nigeria's manufacturing sector. Our country possesses enormous natural resources and needs the technological partnership to transform this natural endowment into high value goods. The drive forward our manufacturing and production capacity, we have developed 17 operational sufficient economic zones with four more currently under construction. 14 of these are general economic zones which support export expression, large scale manufacturing, warehousing, logistic services, tourism, food processing, and packaging and technology development. The remaining three are dedicated to oil and gas related activities. Furthermore, we have commenced the development of three automotive industrial parks that encourage the local assembly of vehicles for the fun African market. In order to encourage increased private capital inflows into Nigeria, we have put together fiscal investment incentives that include three to five years of tax holidays for enterprises in what we deem pioneer industries, tax-free operations, and no restrictions on expatriate quotas in our free trade zones. Capital allowances for agriculture, manufacturing, and engineering in the VAT regime for 5% among others. We are therefore open to widening collaboration with Business Council for International Understanding. Going into partnership with trusted local and foreign partners who have well-established networks and understanding the dynamics of the country is one way to guarantee success in Nigeria. Today's event provides a platform for businesses under the Business Council for International Understanding Umbrella to make connections with credible Nigerian partners. I trust that this event will help build partnerships that will translate into increased trade and investment flows between Nigeria and the United States. I would like to assure you of this administration's continued commitment to maintain an enabling business environment that is open and friendly to foreign investors. Thank you, and once again, we are very blessed to you. The forum focused on the prospect of increasing access to trade, investment, finance, health, education, and agriculture in Nigeria, of which various presentations on Nigeria's investment climate, the market, impact of crude oil theft on the economic outlook, among other issues investors needed to know about Nigeria were brought to the fore. 
According to Price Waterhouse Coopers, Nigeria could be the fastest growing African economy by the year 2050 and could move up the global GDP ratings to 14th in the same year, provided we succeed in our efforts to diversify Nigeria's economy away from oil and strengthen its institutions and infrastructure. Of course, we are already committed to diversifying the economy and we are already enjoying significant results. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, projects global growth to slow from an estimated 6.1% in 2021 to 3.6% in 2022 and 2023. For our economy, we recorded a quarterly GDP growth in quarter one 2022. The growth has been mostly driven by non-oil sector, giving credence to the revenue source and diversification agenda of our government. The agricultural sector our most important has remained resilient in spite of security concern, in spite of low irrigation, limited inputs, and legacy infrastructure challenges with strong food demand bolstering growth. <coughs> growth in manufacturing reflected stronger household and business consumption on account of the reopening of economic activities and improvement in supply chains. The present growth in our service sector is promising. Further privatization, further investment, globalization, and competition will serve to stimulate growth and competition in the service sector and the economy as a whole. On the domestic front, the federal government is taking some bold, decisive, and urgent action to address revenue underperformance and improve our operations to make investment in Nigeria very attractive. Overall, the Nigerian economy is ripe for increased investment. But on the, on the other hand, private capital flows into Nigeria consisting mostly of foreign direct investment have slowed somewhat, hindering the financing of much needed infrastructure and natural resource access projects. The current administration is already working on innovative ways to restore and increase these flows. A key strategy being adopted is the Integrated National Planning Strategy, which seeks to identify ways to expand the financing envelope of the Sustainable Development Goals in Nigeria and enhance the sustainable development impact of financing by seeking to integrate and align public and private financial policies, regulatory frameworks, instruments, and business processes with sustainable development. The power sector is recognized as a major catalyst for Nigeria's industrialization. To this end, in July 2021, I launched the 614-kilometer Ajakuta Kaduna Kano Gas Pipeline Project to enhance our energy security. The current administration also provided the sovereign guarantee for this vital infrastructural project. When completed, this project will drive industrialization across the country. Furthermore, the first phase of the Presidential Power Initiative will provide over 40 million people with more reliable electricity supply, create 11,000 direct and indirect employment for Nigerians. This will be from power system engineers to electricians and contractors, and this will in turn improve the standard of living while providing homes and businesses with constant, reliable, and affordable electricity supply. You may also wish to note that at the commencement of this administration, 200 billion naira was paid for stranded power to service existing liabilities. 
Contract terms in power purchase agreement were changed from take or pay to take and pay. Similarly, the distribution companies were made to use banks for bill collections. Prior to this, the transmission company of Nigeria was getting only 50% of proceeds. Now the TCN is financially viable and can invest in its own infrastructural projects. May I also inform you that the federal government of Nigeria has always recognized security as another critical element in the flow of investment and in the overall economic and infrastructural development anywhere in the country. In this regard, the current administration has put in much investment in improving security and we are committed to doing much more. We will continue to give all necessary support to our security office in order to ensure that they are able to tackle the challenge headlong. Indeed, the Nigerian military is making significant progress in the fight against terrorism and overall insecurity and is building the momentum in reducing the challenge to its barest minimum. Your Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, the war in Ukraine and lingering COVID-19 pandemic have continued to somewhat elevate fiscal risk globally. Nigeria is not immune or to, from and not isolated from the impacts of the crisis. We have experienced high commodity prices, depressed external demand and declining remittances, all of which affect growth. Similarly, the level of insecurity on account of Boko Haram and other terrorist organizations such as ISWA, as well as banditry, kidnapping, criminality, and other negative groups across Nigeria have also impacted negatively on our efforts. Happily, we are overcoming such bends with huge prospects for stability, which foreign direct investment could uh, count upon. The advantages and disadvantages of investing in Nigeria far outweigh the challenges. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I wish us all very successful deliberation and I assure you that the federal government of Nigeria is very keen to consider the outcome of the deliberations and recommendations of this important forum in order to elevate the Nigerian project to its rightful place of magnitude. I thank you all for listening. Two Nigerians making the country proud on the global scene had time to talk about how both the African Development Bank and the African Export and Import Bank are interested in the opportunities in Nigeria. Your Excellencies, uh, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a meeting of this nature will certainly not be complete without uh, someone like uh, Akimumi Adeshina, our own Adeshina, president of the ADB, come and speak. It's your time to take the mic. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Shew. I am greatly really honored to be invited to speak to you today about investing in Nigeria and to share some thoughts on some of the global challenges facing Africa and Nigeria and suggestions for tackling them with global partnerships. Let me start by saying that size matters. Nigeria is Africa's largest country with a population of 208 million people. It is a well-endowed nation with huge natural resources, including oil and gas, for which we are mostly known, mining, but also in agriculture, the blue economy, banking and financial services, digital and creative industries, 
and of course, industrial manufacturing. You cannot talk of investing in Africa without thinking of Nigeria. With its rapidly growing population, estimated to be the third largest in the world by 2050, Nigeria is and will always remain an investor's dream. With its market pool, rapidly growing middle class, and a burgeoning youth population that not only create demand, but also SPAC and spoil entrepreneurship. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Nigerians excel in whatever they do. All you have to do is just look at Amusan, the way she won the gold medals and set records in same day, two world records. Give it up to her, yeah. That's why I am proud to be a Nigerian. I was born as a Nigerian. I'll live as a Nigerian. I'll die as a Nigerian. And on the resurrection morning, I'll ask God for permission. If I can come out with Nigerian flag in my hand, as long as it's green and green, green, white, green. I think of who we are. Look at Nollywood today. Nigeria's film industry is estimated at $7.2 billion today and becomes second in the world after Hollywood. Where you send me on assignment and support me strongly from Nigeria, the African Development Bank. I'm pleased and proud to say, with all humility, last year the African Development Bank was ranked as the number one financial, multilateral financial institution in the world. And this year, the African Development Bank was ranked as the most transparent institution in the world. And so welcome to our world, the Nigerian world. Investors must recognize this and invest in Nigeria. That's why the African Development Bank, together with the Islamic Development Bank, the French Development Agency, are investing $618 million in the Digital and Creative Enterprises program called IDICE in Nigeria. The program will support 225 creative startups and 451 digital technology small and medium sized enterprises. They will create 6.1 million jobs and add $6.4 billion to Nigeria's economy. That is the power of international partnerships around Nigeria. The future is not just digital. The future will be di driven by digital revolution. According to the estimates of McKinsey, the number of tech, tech startups in Africa has increased by threefold to reach 5,200 companies, with half of those being fintech companies. Today, Nigeria has five out of the seven unicorns in Africa that have raised almost $1.4 billion out of the total of $4 billion raised by fintech companies all across Africa in 2021. When you think of financial services, digital innovations, don't think far, think Nigeria. With Flutterwave, Ope, Andela, and Interswitch holding the status of unicorn companies worth at least $1 billion. And I ran into the young man running Flutterwave, Benga Agbola, as I was walking into it. Benga, are you here? Just a shout out to you and say, if you're here, Thank you, and keep doing well. Today, ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria holds impressive investors that are global references. The newly constructed $19 billion Dangote petrochemical and fertilizer complex, the world's largest ammonia plant, in the free trade zone with a new deep sea port, is exactly the kind of massive infrastructural and industrial manufacturing that is needed to make Nigeria a regional and global powerhouse in gasoline, diesel, and aviation, fuel, and fertilizer value chains. And I see the Minister of Petroleum Resources, Mr. State, I think you will agree with what I'm saying. Yes, Nigeria has several challenges, I accept. 
But Nigeria remains an attractive investment destination. That's why the African Development Bank has invested $4.5 billion in Nigeria to help unlock, for example, its huge agricultural potential. The Minister of Agriculture is here. They used to call us HMA. I think they still call you HMA. <laughs> the African Development Bank, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, and the Islamic Development Bank, whose vice president, I believe, is here, has provided $540 million to de develop special agro-industrial processing zones. And thank you, Minister of Finance, for helping us to move that along. This financing will boost food and agribusiness value chains across Nigeria and make Nigeria more competitive. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the power of international partnerships working for Nigeria. Your Excellency, Mr. President, we, the partners, are looking forward to your launching the landmark special agro-industrial processing zones soon. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, roses comes with thorns. Nigeria's economic and growth potential roses have a few thorns. But those thorns should not discourage us. They call on us to strengthen international partnerships around Nigeria. Nigeria's growth will be conditional on its ability to fix its massive infrastructure deficits. The National Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan shows that Nigeria will need a total financing of $759 billion to support infrastructure over a 23-year horizon from 2020 to 2043. This covers tackling the crippling lack of energy to power the economy, including power generation, transmission and distribution infrastructure, water and sanitation, and transport infrastructure. The African Development Bank has invested over $44 billion in infrastructure in Africa over the last six years. Together with our partners, we stand ready to build strong alliances to help Nigeria tackle its infrastructure deficits. At the Africa Infrastru Investment Forum, organized by the African Development Bank and its partners in March of 2022, and Professor Rama is here from the Africa Action Bank, a great partner with us on that, we mobilized investment commitment of $16.1 billion to finance the Lagos to Abidjan Highway that will boost Nigeria's connectivity trade and competitiveness. That is the power of partnerships around Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, African countries are facing today a huge debt challenge. Due to the confluence of factors, especially COVID, climate, and of course the Ukraine conflict, what I call the three C's. The solution for them is simple. The three F's, finance, finance, and more finance. Financing is critical because the debt to GDP ratio of Africa has increased to 70%. Several countries are at the risk of high debt distress due to unstable, unstable debt levels. Nigeria's total debt level is 42.84 trillion naira, or $103 billion. External debt level stands at 16.61 trillion naira, or $40 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my firm belief that Nigeria needs help to tackle its debt burden. International partnerships on debt are helping Africa and Nigeria. The issuance of special drawing rights by the International Monetary Fund of $650 billion help to provide liquidity support to countries. However, Africa only received $33 billion out of all of that, which is pretty small. The call made by the African heads of state and government for developed economies to rechannel $100 billion of additional SDRs to Africa will go a long way in helping to reduce the debt burden, and of course for that as well, in Nigeria. And allocating this SDR, some of it through the African Development Bank, will actually allow us to leverage it more times 
because we are a leveraging machine as triple A financial institutions, we can deliver more financing to Nigeria and Africa. Nigeria and other African countries, therefore, in my opinion, need debt relief. They cannot run up the hill carrying a backpack full of sand. African countries, including Nigeria, need international partnership to tackle climate change. Africa, which only accounts for 3% of total carbon emissions, suffers more from the negative impacts of climate change. I just came back from Cabo Verde. I went to Mauritania. In Cabo Verde, in the last five years, they've never had a single day of rain. I was in Mauritania, vast areas deserted just because of climate change that we didn't cause. And so Africa, including Nigeria, is suffering a lot from it. All you have to do in Nigeria is take a look at the Lake Chad Basin. It used to be about 25 million kilometers uh, uh, square. You look at it today, it's nothing there. It has gone, everything has gone with it. We lose seven to five billion dollars, 15 billion dollars a year in Africa due to climate change. And if we don't change that, that will rise to roughly 50 billion dollars by 2030. Therefore, Africa needs financing for climate change, and Nigeria needs climate financing, because Nigeria will need $247 billion between 2020 and 2030 to tackle climate change. And Your Excellency, Mr. President Muhari's great issue is we have to revive and revitalize the Lake Chad Basin. International partnerships are needed and they must be developed to support Nigeria in such a great effort. The African Development Bank and the Global Center on Adaptation have launched what we call the African Adaptation Acceleration Program to mobilize $25 billion of financing for climate adaptation for Africa. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the road may be long, the journey may sometimes be rough, but we must keep hope alive. Nigeria will not be alone. The African Development Bank and other development partners, many of whom are here today, will be there to strongly support Nigeria. I like the song by Michael Jackson that also says, the man in the mirror. It says, I'm talking about the man in the mirror. I'm asking him also to change his ways. We must change our ways sometimes. And His Excellency the President talked about it himself. To attract greater foreign direct investment to Nigeria, we must fix the security situation. Capital does not like to be troubled. Ultimately, investment capital must be made comfortable. Only then can it be attracted. Investment capital in the quantum required to accelerate Nigeria's growth and development can only be attracted in the presence of secure environments. Essentially, investors will vote with their money about where to have it positioned. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, with the right conditions in place, we can confidently say Nigeria is a great investment destination. Believe in us, invest in us, and invest with us, and you will not be disappointed. Thank you very much. Our present bank is banking. I don't know, banking that payment system with $3 billion. What that will do for us is that it makes it possible for the Nollywood film producer to sell his product to a Zambian farmer. The Zambian farmer doesn't need to start looking for dollars or euro. He just uses Zambian culture and pays for it. Today, he cannot do that because he doesn't, unless he has a credit card that is in foreign currency. What it also does is that the project 
to bring liquidity to the stock exchanges can go forward. So the Nigeria Stock Exchange, if you invest in the Nigeria Stock Exchange, um, somebody in Egypt can buy shares in the Nigeria Stock Exchange using Egyptian palm. The person who is selling in Nigeria gets the Nigerian Naira. So what that does then is that it brings all Africa into those stock exchanges and brings liquidity. When you then have liquidity, you have more investments, you have more investors coming to those, we have more funding, and our currencies will be stronger. And the final thing I wanted to say, although we have quite a few things we are doing on the, on the inter-African trade, is that the African Union has mandated us to put in place the African Continental Free Trade Agreement Adjustment Facility. The agreement requires that um, tariffs be removed. And that uh, we started with 90%, but I think we are going to have a 97% removal. There are countries in the continent that use tariff as a source of fiscal revenue, not as a means of trade policy. So for them to participate in this trade agreement, we have to find an arrangement to make it possible for them to open their borders. And that is what the adjustment facility is supposed to do. So we have already structured the adjustment facility being established in Kigali. A present bank is investing one billion dollars in it. We expect that we will need eight to ten billion dollars, not only to do the compensation payments, but also to support the um, uh, private sector to retool and participate in the trade. And finally, in the bank in, uh, in Nigeria, we are also helping to make sure investors come. Uh, we are developing the we are developing uh, a quaternary hospital, the Africa Medical Center of Excellence, a 500 bed hospital. We are developing with King's College Hospital. What that will do for the economy? It makes it possible for investors to have the confidence to come. Any investor going anywhere wants to make sure that if anything happens, can go to a first-class hospital. And we are doing one in Abuja. Everywhere we go, we hear this issue of the debt of Nigeria is a problem and is not sustainable. The debt and debt financing that we do in Nigeria is following a design debt management strategy. As of today, and this has been reported by two previous speakers, Nigeria's public debt stock is 100.1 billion US dollars, or 14.6 trillion naira, which represents 24% of the nominal GDP as, as 2021. This is below the 40% threshold that we had set up for ourselves. Nigeria operates a four-year rolling medium-term debt management strategy which guides the borrowing strategy of the federal government. And we have specific indices that we very closely track and monitor. The public debt stock, like I said, should, uh, that we said is 40%, we are at 24%. The portfolio composition between external and domestic is set at uh, 30, uh, sorry, 70, 70% uh, 30, so 30, of our debt is domestic, and 30% is uh, external. We also have a mix of long to short-term financing, and the mix is 75 to, to 25. And we're very well within this threshold. So the medium-term debt management strategy shows that the Nigerian debt portfolio is still operating within sustainable limits. But we do have a revenue problem. And this revenue problem we're tackling using the instrument of the strategic revenue initiative, the revenue challenges we have, we have uh, been addressing in a systematic manner, and we have seen improvements in non-oil revenue. The foreign subsidy deductions and lower oil outputs have, been, have had a very, very significant impact in the revenue uh, performance. This underperformance in the oil and gas sector is largely caused by pipeline vandalization. And it is being addressed by the security agencies, and we're beginning to see uh, improvements. There is also revenue leakages that we have identified and are being systematically 
uh, blocked by the digitizing of the various tax systems that were operating in Nigeria. There are some ineffective tax incentives that are currently in the process of being reviewed, so some that have uh, reached matur maturity may not be renewed. There might be some new ones that are introduced, but we're trying to make sure that we're getting value for the investments that we are providing. The SRGI is designed around three thematic areas. One is to achieve sustainability in the revenue generation. Two is to identify new and enhanced uh, enforcement of existing revenue streams. And three is to achieve cohesion within the revenue ecosystem, alignment between our people and our tools. We have also adopted some innovative approaches to financing infrastructure. One is uh, the Road Infrastructure Tax Refurbishment Scheme, the RITC, which has been launched and designed to leverage private sector capital and expertise to construct, repair, and maintain critical roads in key economic corridors and investment clusters in Nigeria. This scheme is designed to enable private sector choose a road in Nigeria, mostly a road that has economic um, uh, importance, use their resources to develop the road, and recover their investment over time using the instrument of tax rents. Second instrument is the sovereign school bonds, in which the debt management office issues uh, instruments that the investing public buys. So while it is a debt instrument, it is also an investment instrument. Because we've seen today, after issuing four circles, totaling about uh, uh, 612 uh, billion, we've seen investors in this world actually identifying with those that they have invested. If you go across the country, across the six geopolitical zones, you will see signboards that says this road is constructed uh, using Sukuk. And it has become so popular that every time we issue a Sukuk, the last one we issued was 340% oversubscribed. So it's an investment instrument even though it's, uh, it's also a debt instrument. The third uh, instrument is the Infrastructure Corporation of Nigeria, the Infraco. I'm glad the CDN governor is here. I'm sure he'll talk about the Infra Infraco. Designed with a capitalization of 1 trillion naira, that is an equivalent of about 2.4 billion US dollars, is expected to also catalyze and accelerate investments in infrastructure. And the Infraco is actively looking for investors that will partner with it for investment in infrastructure. The fourth is investment from the National Sovereign Investment Authority, the NSIA infrastructure projects, which have been established to catalyze growth of key sectors that support national uh, um, importance. There is the PIDF that is also being implemented by the, by the sovereign authority. So the future is bright. The recognition of the need for us to take uncomfortable and very difficult reforms to ensure Nigeria stays on the path of sustainable growth, the federal government is proposing to eradicate for subsidy by mid-2023, aggressively grow revenues using all fiscal tools available and at our disposal, continue to promote spending efficiency, create space for private sector participation as anticipated in the National Development Plan. It is our strong belief that the initiatives that are currently under, currently under implementation as well as those that are proposed signals the federal government's commitment to accelerating sustainable economic development that will be felt by all Nigerians. As we pursue this path, we welcome France partners, investors, both domestic and foreign, to partner with us on this journey and to reap the rewards of investing in Nigeria. Having been informed of the great opportunities in Africa's largest economy, it was time to express readiness for partnerships. Work to make more transactions and more financing available in Sub-Saharan Africa. But I also come here with a commitment from the Biden administration to be very aggressive about the work that we are doing, especially on the heels of the global pandemic and several worldwide supply chain shocks that have affected all of our industries, ranging from healthcare to energy. But I want to be able to let you know that the U.S. Export Bank and America's exporters stand ready to be partners in Nigeria's economic growth.
I have already, in a few short months, met with your Minister of Finance, met with the Bank of Industry, met with so many of you who are, ex who are business owners, who are interested in partnering with our American companies. And so, as the chair of Export-Import Bank, the first African American, the first person of color, and only the second woman to be um, head of the bank. Our commitment, our commitment to Sub-Saharan Africa runs deep. I know so many of you work with our Ambassador Leonard in country, but we want to know, let you know, we are working very closely with our Department of State, very closely with our National Security and Economic security team because we firmly understand that economic security is national security and national security is economic security. So over the past 20 years we have supported nearly 20 billion dollars worth of projects on the continent and today we have upwards of 2 billion right now in our pipeline. You know my journey to XM which began in February we have had such a deep commitment on sub-Saharan Africa. I hosted the first, my first minister, my first foreign leader was from the continent. So I am, I've also formed an internal Africa working group that has never happened at XM before. And we're bringing in some leading experts on Africa to help us as we move forward on how we are investing in Africa. We have a new board chair of our subcommittee advisory, Jude Kearney, who's a former colleague of mine in the Clinton administration and someone who actually has a deep commitment to Africa. So he'll be joined with the mandated Africa committee that Flora will be sitting on. So our goal is not to drive in best investment for Africa, but rather to create new opportunities with Africa. All of these efforts are, are for us, building towards the Africa Leaders Summit that President Biden and, Pres and Vice President Harris announced that will take place in Washington this September. And it also coincides with our own annual conference. So as we move down the road to the summit, I want and need your help to build the kind of collaborations and projects that both support American export jobs and the economic prosperity of Nigeria. You know, importantly, we have oh, so many different programs that we can use at XM for investments. But we are trying to be as creative and innovative as we possibly can. And we are also wanting you to know that being here at this conference and being here at, at the UN, we know that the, it's, it's almost like the, the major word here is, how are we doing more on the energy security side? And that's why, Projects around renewables and energy efficiency and energy storage, our electric vehicles are very, very important for us. And we're working very closely with our counterparts at the Development Finance Corporation, the U.S. Trade Development Agency, the Millennial Challenge Corporation, the Department of Commerce, and the Department of State. So in closing, I want to let you know, not only does the Biden administration have a commitment, but I have a personal commitment. I have traveled to the continent in my previous role with the State Department. I have been into working with governors on the continent. I signed the first MOU with U.S. governors and Nigerian governors and have participated in numerous bilateral exchanges. So I'm not new to the work on Africa. I am not new to the work of working with Nigeria. What I am new to is a position that will allow me to have a deeper commitment to work with all of you as collaborators and partners as we move forward to, to make sure that we have shared prosperity, not just here in America, but also on the continent and in Nigeria in particular. Thank you very much for giving me a few minutes to be here today. Uh, let me start by, Nigeria is therefore a priority country for the Corporate Council on Africa. And we appreciate that we have the opportunity to work with who want to increase health security, food security, build infrastructure that's needed to invite you to uh, meet with him. And he is always looking to serve the interest of the African continental free trade area, of which Nigeria is a part. 
and we believe in Nigeria, in the Nigerian people, and we uh, believe that, uh, as uh, uh, Secretary Blinken said in his uh, virtual meeting with President Buhari, that there is an American commitment to Nigeria, and CCA will continue to play our part in uh, supporting that relationship and building a stronger U.S.-Africa trade and investment business relationship, including with Nigeria. So thank you once again, and we look forward to an engaging discussion throughout today geared towards unlocking opportunities between the United States and Nigeria. Thank you so much. High-level conversations on scaling up international partnership for Nigeria on the development drive also took center stage. Almost every state in Nigeria has one form of mineral or another that is ready to be exploited. Uh, the world has also accepted gas as a transition fuel. There's no alternative to it today so they can bring the flexibility that is required. So that's what we are doing, to see how we can leverage on the enormous gas resources in our country, provide the flexibility that is required for energy transition. We're embarking on massive infrastructure project, which was also in Mr. President's speech, and to see how we can deliver the Nigeria-Morocco gas pipeline, which will pass to 11 countries, provide a number of securities, including bringing up people out of poverty and also what opportunities that are there that we're doing also in the domestic market, bringing in more gas into the domestic market. Some of you may be aware that today we're getting a grant to do baseline uh, emission studies for carbon emission studies in our country by the United States government. And, and this is very helpful in, in this very sense that Mr. President also adds that you know, we need to be supported. And that support needs to come. And currently, the major source of financing that we're having is lacking from the uh, African exit. And I'm happy to hear ADP um, uh, CEO say that we can also be of help. But more than anything, also the U.S. exit will come on the table and we're engaging them. And ultimately, that creates opportunity for businesses here in the oil and gas center in terms of financing for gas projects and not just gas projects. It creates opportunities, gas based industries, chemicals will always be required uh, as we continue to progress. And even agricultural chemicals will continue to be beyond 2050. So, Clearly, it's an opportunity time for everybody in the oil and gas industry. Our country has the largest gas reserve that you can find in Africa. So when you talk about diversification of Nigeria's economy, we still believe that that diversification must start from the oil, oil sector. Because gas is a very versatile uh, product. Um, you can convert gas to petrochemicals. I mean, and you know, if you have petrochemicals, you can you, you can understand how many uh, factories petrochemicals can uh, can enable. Um, gas also can be converted to fertilizer. Um, of course, if you produce uh, gas uh, fertilizer from gas, you know that that is going to enable the growth of the agricultural sector. Gas can be converted to methanol. And of course, that can enable uh, the pharmaceutical industry and of course the uh, chemical industry. Uh, uh, gas, of course, can be converted to power. Uh, so we believe that gas is still the way to go if you want to diversify the economy. So Mr. President, when he came in 2015, he focused on agriculture and that's exactly what we are doing, following in his uh, direction. And agri today is the area that you can diversify to the, the economy is contributing over 24% continuously, consistently, and we believe we can do a lot more than that. And part of it is also employing over 35% of the employment in the country. So Agric is the place to go. Investors come to Nigeria. We have the land, we have the water, we have the air. We have different climatic conditions, different ecological zones where you can plant anything from semi-arid all the way down to rainforest. We have mapped the soil of Nigeria. We know the nutrient content. We can tell you what to plant, when and where, and how much fertilizer to use. So in, in essence, we are doing efficient agriculture. At the end, deals worth millions of U.S. dollars were signed with commitment for more. And we are here to finance projects around biodiversity and carbon credits. Uh, this is the goal of Adriada. Adriada is a company that develops projects around biodiversity, and there is a huge uh, possibility to develop this project in Nigeria. So as soon as possible, we'll be there to develop this project. I, I hope uh, uh, before the end of this year. Uh, we have a very good partner, Noblesse Energy, to develop this kind of project.